Welcome to the Borough Life Podcast with James and Rosie. Every month we chat to local guests to celebrate the great things happening in and around Wigan Borough. Let's get started, shall we? Hello and welcome to the Borough Life Podcast. You may notice that we're in a new location for today's episode. Yeah, a little bit of news about that coming up and, and about where we are. Uh, Rosie, we're back for episode three of the year. It's another one guest episode, but it's a very special guest. So who have we got coming up? It is. We've got Alison Mackenzie Folan, who is the Chief Executive of Wigan Council, coming on to speak about all things International Women's Day, her journey to leadership, and why she thinks it's important for girls and women to have great opportunities here in Wigan Borough. Absolutely. So yeah, we're really excited to speak to Alison. Um, and yeah, we'll come back after the interview with a little bit of information about the next edition of Borough Life magazine. So the spring edition, uh, we've just started to uh, the, the process of uh, writing and, and uh, getting it all together. So yeah, we'll be back after the interview. Rosie, should we just get on with it? Yeah, let's get started. So we're all set up here in Wigan Town Centre at the Pod Pod Studio. Um, Alison, it's amazing to have you on the Borough Life podcast. Uh, please, could you just introduce yourself and tell us your job title? Oh, thanks so much, James. Uh, my name is Alison Mackenzie Folan. I'm Chief Executive at Wigan, but I also have a bit of another job, which is the Place Based Lead for Health and Care Integration for the NHS. So we're, we're going to come on to talk about your, your role um, across the borough a little bit later on. But first off, uh, we'd like to talk about International Women's Day. Uh, so, Rosie, over to you. Yep. So at the time of recording, we're fast approaching March and International Women's Day. Uh, we host an event every year, but uh, what I wanted to ask was why do you think it's so important that we recognise International Women's Day here in Wigan Borough? Oh, thanks, Rosie. I'm getting excited. Is it three days, be, four days? It's going to be good. It's Friday. It's going to be good. Um, the reason why I think it's important, Rosie, is it's a real chance for us to celebrate, isn't it? We've got so many incredible, talented women uh, and young girls in this borough uh, from all different backgrounds, all different walks of life. Um, and it's time to celebrate them and it's a time to come together. Uh, it's a real time to share stories and really broaden our awareness and our understanding of their achievements and the achievements of what they do in our communities. So I think it's going to be amazing. Absolutely. It's always a great event, isn't it? And that's one of the things I love most about it, the fact that it's just so many different people coming together, isn't it? So we have, uh, as I mentioned, the event uh, every year. But can you tell us a bit more about this year's event? Um, at, we're obviously recording before the event. This episode will go out after. But what, what can people expect? Well, bigger and better every year and getting more special. So it's going to be a really special event. Um, and I do believe it is getting uh, better every year. So it's definitely a celebration and that's what the focus is. So uh, if you come along, you're going to see performances, you're going to see singers, people who are dancing, some poetry. Uh, we'll definitely be having some giggles because it's going to be um, a comedian and really importantly, some motivational speakers. So um, action packed, entertaining and lots and lots of fun. So a real fun evening of celebration. Absolutely. And I think one of the great things about this event as well is the kind of tangible outcomes that come from it. So I know that this year we're asking for donations, which will go to a local charity, which will um, which helps people affected by domestic violence. Um, so last year we interviewed members of the youth cabinet on this on this podcast and they spoke at the event. So what what do you think, Alison, about why it's so important to include young people in these events and raise youth aspirations in the borough? Uh, on a really serious, uh, serious point, Rosie, I think the fight for equality continues. So, um, and we have to be fearless and re relentless about that. There's still a gender pay gap in this country. There are still uh, fewer men, uh, fewer women, sorry, than men um, in the highest paid jobs and professionalisms and fewer women who are on uh, some of the boards of the, you know, the biggest organisations. And um, we've also seen really, really sadly a rise in sexism and misogyny. And, you know, you've mentioned domestic abuse there and, you know, shockingly, um, the rates of domestic abuse um, for our borough and other boroughs and nationally are still uh, still way too high. Um, so to get young people involved is around raising their aspirations and their ambitions, particularly our young girls and uh, our young women. And I don't know about you, Rosie, but some of you know when they shared their stories last year, they're really, they're really like 
un- inspirational. I mean, I think we were all in awe, weren't we? And uh, just listening intently about some of the things that they had to say. So really important to get them involved. And we want to work closely with our schools and colleges. Um, you know, it's about great training. It's about career options. Um, and we've got some amazing examples of what we've done now with Wigan and Lee College, with Edgehill University and with the hospital, with our civic university agreement. So um, let's help and support our young women and our young girls to access great careers, uh, great jobs and really help them whatever their opportunities are in life and whatever their ambitions are. Brilliant. Um, Alison, I just wanted to butt in at this juncture just to say, uh, Rosie won't thank me for, for saying this because she's far too humble, but also we've had the, the recent news that um, Rosie's been named as, Rosie, correct me if I get this wrong, in the Northern Power Women Awards, you're on the list for the up and coming, uh, is that right? Future list? Yep, that's right. The future list. So I just wanted to pass on uh, my congratulations, Rosie. That's brilliant. But I'm going to fire a question to you, Rosie. What? What's, could you just tell us a little bit about um, what you're expecting with uh, with with that accolade and, and what it is that what it means to you? Yeah. So obviously it means uh, a lot to me, and I'm really I feel really privileged to be on that list. Um, it's about young women and young professionals. Not even young. I don't think. I don't think you have to be young. Uh, but it's about professionals and people working in the community to create positive changes, and that's something I'm really passionate about as well. So I'm really proud to work for a council that is a campaigning council and one that sticks up for women and young girls. Amazing, Rosie. Right, you can go back to your uh, questioning role now and not not do the answers. So, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, am I allowed to join anybody? Yeah, there, no, James? of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course. I think I should. You can't. You can't. You, sh- you can't get away with that, Rosie. <laughs> you can't get away with that. So. Um, we're really, really incredibly p- proud of you, Rosie, to be on the, f- the future list for Northern Power Women. Um, you're such an inspiration and such a role model and um, you are a real power woman. We sh- and, you know, you should be proud of yourself because we are really proud of you. And for me, that just goes to show that, um, you know, Rosie is a star of the future. Um, she's done amazing in her role since she's joined the council. And um, I know that she's got some amazing supportive female colleagues and male colleagues and leaders around us. So she can, you know, she can share a journey and she can learn from them. Um, and, you know, something I'm really proud of in the council is uh, people like Rosie go on to be, you know, senior managers, if that's what they want in the careers. And we, I think, I think it's about 60, 70, 60 to 70 percent of our senior management team are all women so it shows that you know there's a pathway and there's a career way uh, for women in the organization and we are recruiting more and more women into senior roles and um, I think on the political side uh, we've also got some amazing political uh, leaders uh, women on our cabinet who are real role models and inspiration as well for people who want to take a political career so Rosie you're definitely a future leader you're definitely an inspiration and you're a great example of how somebody with you know the talent and the enthusiasm and the passion can really uh, drive their career forward and we're just really really lucky to have you so thank thank you you, Rosie. (laughs) So that sounds like a good place to pause the first part of our interview with Alison mackenzie Follen. Uh, we'll be back after the ad break with the second half of the interview. She is loving it. I'm hating it. I'm definitely in there. <laughs> I feel threatened and uncomfortable. She can't wait to take me home. <laughs> I can't wait to get away from him. What you think is harmless banter can be frightening and disrespectful. Unacceptable behaviour is unacceptable. If you're doing it, cut it out. And if you witness it, call it out. And let's make Wigan a safer place for women. So here's the second part of our interview with Alison. We hope you enjoy it. Okay, welcome back to the Borough Life podcast. Um, Alison, we just wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about about your role and also your uh, feelings about Wigan Borough. I think like myself and Rosie, you, you're kind of an, an adopted Wiganer, aren't you? So what um, talk us through, you've got so many responsibilities and, and the council delivers, you know, more than 300 services for its residents. Um, how do you kind of balance your time, but also remain kind of like, an, you know, an upbeat, you know, approachable um, leader? Because it, it, it must be quite difficult, but you don't you don't seem to always put across that you know the you're walking around the town hall with kind of the weight of the world on on your shoulders you're always um highlighting lots of positivity and obviously we've got our be kind message so mm-hmm. 
how do you do it? You're, it's it's amazing. So yeah, please give us your secrets. Uh, well, we're adopted Wiganers. So I've been here 15 years and I absolutely love this borough and I absolutely love my job. So that helps, doesn't it? Um, and I, I feel really lucky actually to have probably the best job in local government and work for a really brilliant council, a council with strong political leadership, a council with amazing, great staff and great councillors. Um, and this borough um, has got so many great things about it. You know, I could shout loud and proud about it. In fact, I make my family do the Christmas quiz about Wigan and Borough every year and they absolutely love it. So they, they feel uh, we only live a few miles into West Lancs, but they, they love this borough too. So um, love comes into it, you know, that passion. That's why you come to work and you, you feel really excited. I think the second thing is I've always been in public service. So... Um, you know, part of being a public servant is having that sort of real inner motivation to make a difference in people's lives. And, um, you know, I feel really privileged in this job to be able to do that, to be able to work with the politicians and all of our staff and colleagues and in particular our community groups to, to try and make a difference and try and help people lead happy and healthy and prosperous lives. So, um, that's why I've probably um, may have sometimes feel like I've got the weight of the world on my shoulders, but ultimately um, I have that positivity. And that probably links back, James, to the culture and values of the organisation. I think uh, when people new people come to Wigan Council or um, people who visit us and they do say it feels, a, feels really different and that's because of our behaviours and our values. So um, one of them that's been particularly important to me and occasionally, you know, I see people roll their eyes and I just think, you know what, I don't think you can argue with this because actually if you can show compassion and kindness um, in anything that you do, then actually it's about relationships and supporting people and, and showing that you care and showing that you listen. And that doesn't mean to say that I don't have to make really tough, difficult, hard decisions. That doesn't mean to say that I don't have to have um, really hard conversations. But um, if you can do that in a safe and inclusive culture, you can actually do it with compassion and you get better outcomes when you can do that. So this isn't just about listening to staff, it's about listening to residents. Um, and it's actual kindness is about courage. It's actually having the willingness to change stuff. It's having the willingness to really be radically different and challenge, but you can do that through um, that compassionate lens. And um, I've always tried to do that. I've always tried to, to be courageous. I've tried to be kind and I've tried to be open and honest. And um, that's just who I am. And that's, that's, I just bring myself to work and I'd encourage everybody else just to be themselves and particularly in Wigan where we can be. So um, an amazing place to be with amazing people. Uh, you know, lots of challenges, lots of things that we still need to get right. But I think collectively we can do that. And now more than ever, we need to do it. Yeah, absolutely. That, yeah, such a good answer. We, we just recently, um, our listeners might uh, remember our previous episode where we, we spoke to Sasha Lord. Um, and he made that point about coming to Wigan and you, or I should say Wigan Borough, of course, comes across to the borough and um, you can feel the can do attitude everywhere you go whether it's at the town hall or in the community groups there's a real there's a real push isn't there to to make things happen um so what also i wanted to ask um just following on from that question about your your many roles and responsibilities we'd love to know what what do you do to switch off I've got two dogs right okay <laughs> who are very very demanding um so um tend to walk those I love to get into nature um, and particularly with the dogs although occasionally they do bark so they destroy a bit of peace and quiet but I mean that's what's wonderful about Wigan as well isn't it I mean 70% of the places are green spaces uh, an urban national nature reserve the flashes hay hall um, you know over to Pennington Flash Amber's Wood um, the biodiversity and the nature here is unbelievable um, so yeah get out in green spaces walk the dogs um, and you know what I occasionally get into Netflix series so <laughs> I binge watched Griselda and, oh, right, and, okay. and One Day so uh, which is really unusual for me actually I don't uh, tend to watch much TV but I've ended up doing a bit of um, Netflix so walk the dogs get into nature um and you know you know read a book pick up a book yeah. listen to podcasts well yeah there you go well we should yeah. mention that we have um 
as part of the, once we've got the important stuff out of the way in our morning meeting in in our team yeah we, we do have a little couple of minutes at the end where we have tv club <laughs> and we all share if, if anyone's got any like netflix uh, recommendations so there you go well, there we you can go. pass that on they to were, the team they were very t- two very different genres there but they're very different <laughs> genres <laughs> one day in griselda yeah yeah uh, so uh, and and just another one from me sorry rosie i'm i'm I've, the questions are just flowing over here um i've just thought you've been um you must have you travel across uh, the country and get involved with other like the the as a chief exec the, the network of, of local government um what is it that you like um telling like colleagues who may not have come to wigan before or like how do you how do you describe it to them in my Wiganese. <laughs> no. Um, I describe it as a, a place of opportunity, really, a place where um, we've got really strong community groups, a place where people are a bit of upfront and honest that we can talk to each other. So, um, you know, it, 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 we've got so many things that we can do here. So it's a place that feels different, it's a place that feels like a family, uh, and people look out for each other and are really supportive. And, you know, my job is to sort of sell the borough loud and proud. And if you just think about our geographical location, you know, in the middle of the northwest, uh, located into Greater Manchester and then links into Liverpool City region, Lancashire, up to Cumbria. If you think about our transport network, you know, which is improving all of the time now with the the deregulation of buses, the green spaces, uh, the multi millions of pounds that we've got to regenerate Lee Town Centre, Ashton Town Centre, Wigan Town Centre, um, you know, the circa, you know, £40 million of investment up at Hay Hall. We're doing some big things here, uh, some brave things and some big things. And, and this is on the back of conversations with the public because, you know, we want to do all of that. And, uh, you know, it's for our young people, isn't it? It's for the future here. So we've got some big stuff happening and um, it's really exciting. Yeah, it's going to be a busy couple of years, isn't it, coming up? Fab. So one final question, if that's okay. Um, Along the way, I'm sure you've had plenty of mentors, male and female, um, but is there one piece of advice that's kind of stuck out to you that you carry with you every day? Oh, that's a good question, Rosie. One piece of advice. Um, Well, I think it's about never stop learning, you know, Rosie. Um, James asked, didn't he, around going to other councils? Well, you know, we do that in local government. We're really good at learning from each other. But I think my advice would be never stop learning. So never stop asking why. Never stop being curious. Never stop um, looking at other, you know, other other areas, what other people are doing. And, um, you know, whether you listen to podcasts, whether you read a book, you might do a formal training course. Um, you might just go and have a chat to other people. I think um, learning, lifelong learning, is really important to all of us. And that comes from asking the questions and um, putting yourself out there. So I think that would be my, my big message and encouraging people to do that. So encouraging people to be curious, encouraging people to have that thirst for knowledge. And that's about improvement, isn't it? It's about improving the place that you work for the people that you work for as a public servant but then it's also about improving yourself so um and now never more important than ever so if you just think about you know we're sat in an amazing studio here with great technology around us if you just think about the power of artificial intelligence now and this you know the world's going to go through another you know radical transformation with Uh, artificial intelligence so let's grasp it let's consider the ethical considerations but you know let's let's think about what that means so that is about learning isn't it how do we learn all of the time so i think that would be my message really um and yeah that's 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 where i think it would be it's a good one thank you alison thanks very much for coming on um can we book you in now uh for 2025 you certainly can and then i'll be you know I, i'm really conscious that one of the things i didn't mention james was you know the the cultural work that we've done here now we're on the radar uh we've got people visiting visiting us nationally um from arts council england um obviously you you'd mentioned sasha being on one of these podcasts looking at uh, what we're trying to do with the nighttime economy but you know the culture is front and center so the things that we do for our communities on events um, is really important but also just our cultural venues are, are going to be 
you know you blink an eye and in 2025 26 27 there's there's going to be um real uh, progress here but progress with unity it's our new era james that's what we're on a, that's what we're up to hey we're ticking all the boxes there aren't we so i i can i'll take this opportunity just to plug uh, the next uh, edition of borough life the magazine there'll be an update on our, our cultural program and there's there's loads of exciting things coming up so yeah keep an eye out for that one um in the spring Alison, thanks very much. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rosie. Thanks, James. So there we go, Rosie. We're at the end of another episode and uh, that was good fun, wasn't it, talking to Alison? It was. She's a really inspirational leader and I absolutely can't wait for our International Women's Day event coming very soon. Yes, so for us, it's like a couple of days... No, another week to go. Another week to go. I lost track of time there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, obviously when when, uh, the podcast goes out, we'll have just had it. Um, but yeah please check out the Wigan Council's social channels for a kind of recap of the event and uh, and follow the links for, for any of the, the relevant information. Yeah and I'll just plug last year's um, event and podcast around International Women's Day we referenced it in the chat with Alison but if you head to our episode from last year we spoke to Izzy and Leanne who were just two really inspiring young women yeah it was great that episode wasn't it definitely one of the favorites from last year um but i think this episode might be one of the favorites for for this year so yeah i've re- really enjoyed it today and it's been amazing being in the the pod pod studio as you can see a bit of a change for us um and we've we, yeah it's been fantastic so this facility is in the the heart of wigan town center at, at wigan hall um so yeah and we've yeah so thanks very much to the team for for hosting us today um Rosie, as ever, um, if anybody wants to find the uh, Borough Life content, the past versions of the magazine, um, the Borough Life Plus content that we we put on the website with some extra video uh, that links into the uh, the magazine, or the back catalogue of the podcast, as you mentioned, where do they find it? <laughs> Just head to wigan.gov.uk forward slash Borough Life or stream us on all your major streaming platforms. Yes, and we're just about to, as we mentioned earlier in the episode, get cracking with the next edition um, of the magazine itself. So we'll be back um, in a month's time with a bit more info about that and um, another great guest. Yep, lots still to come as well. Brilliant. Right, thanks, Rosie. Thanks, James. See See you you next next time. time.